But where I'm standing now, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he is so hilarious. That's why I knew you can't get away. If I do this in front of a crowd, I can do this. Like, nothing. Excited to be here with Jennifer of Irma Rose. My name is Tiffany Farrell, now Tiffany Mikachi, <laughs> and I am the winemaker, one of the winemakers here at Hack Vineyards and Winery in Santa Fe, Texas. This was a, a bottling line that Raymond Hack pieced together. It's a German bottling line, and we are very thankful to have it so that we can just keep production going pretty much consistently, although not today. Realistically, we can do probably two pallets, so that's about maybe 230 cases a day. If all things go smooth, you know, that's a little asterisk, if all things go smooth. There's a lot of things and parts and pieces, you know, if we are doing corks, um, if we're doing the stelv enclosures, um, this labeler seems to sometimes have a mind of its own. It will kind of do this like self-adjust dance. And then uh, we stack them 56 cases high here, roll them into the next room, continue on to the 112 cases high. Um, so that's probably a good day, 230 cases. I'm pretty happy with that. So this was like the original room of the winery. So um, Hack Winery opened its doors as a uh, commercial winery in 2000. And um, these four tanks here, these are four 1500 gallon tanks and these were the original. These are great for for ferment, fermenting, we usually, like my rule of thumb is um, to allow 250 gallons of headspace for every ton of fruit fermented. So this essentially can ferment about six tons of fruit. So I usually like to do um, our kind of like small batch, um, like if it's Merlot or Malbec. Um, we've been doing, last year we did some Montepulciano. Um, we'll usually do them in here like in six ton batches. And then if we, for our bigger ones, like our Tempranillo, maybe like um, 8 to 10 tons um, in the 2 and 3,000 gallon tank. And so these have been really cool. We've, we started getting these, um, uh, these are new, new to us, 550 gallon tanks just for like holding wine, doing even smaller aging. batches. Bulk aging? Bulk aging, so long as we have like 550 gallons to put in there. Um, because I don't want to leave headspace, as, as you know, leaving the olage and the, um, the wine is bad. Another new thing that we, we're, we haven't done in the past um, is um, at the end of fermentation, everything we made before 2019 or so was like free run. <laughs> we would never press the skins after. And so that's something we started doing now. Right? And so we're, we'll, we're using these to hold our press fractions, which is really, it's we were surprised at the yield that we get from it. So, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> I don't press my skins either, and I just started saying that we are. What do you mean by that? In time, Raymond saw growth. He was getting successful, and especially his Blanc de Bois. We are well, we are well known as a winery for our Blanc de Bois program here, um, and he anticipated some growth. Unfortunately, I don't know the exact time that he said. Let's build on, but he did. This is our estate vineyard. What I love about this vineyard, you know, is that it's been nurtured with love by the hacks for 30 plus years. Um, but also what I love about it is it is an actual estate vineyard. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but it's three acres. Not three acres producing, unfortunately. And what I call an estate vineyard, so now, um, the, the laws for considering fruit a state fruit has to be in an AVA. We are located not in an AVA, we are in Galveston County, um, but we are grandfathered into that. So we can still, when we harvest fruit and if we make a wine with 100% of our fruit, we can still label it a state fruit and that's very important. Hello, my name is Anthony Tamberella. I'm a manager at Hack Manual Winery. I'm standing at the Hack's backyard, well, was the Hack's backyard. Uh, they moved here on their fifth anniversary after they graduated from Santa Fe. Uh, Mr. Hack was in the military, so he traveled for about four years, and then when they got out of the military, moved back to Santa Fe, and they moved here. And then Mrs. Hack 
gave Mr. Hack on their 10th anniversary three rows of vines. And you can kind of see out here the three first rows are the symbolical rows, the rows that started off the vineyard. And they started off with the Concord grape, which is a wild grape here in Texas. But unfortunately, it didn't do so well here. Um, they died out within about five years. And so Mr. Hack flew to Florida and met with a researcher um, and found the Blanc de Ball grape and started it here. And that's how it started out in this, as a hobby and became a passion. So under here is our chapel. It was built in 2009 by the Hacks children for their 50th anniversary. We host different weddings under here. If we have different events like a concert, we'll have our bar set up out here so you can get some wine. And all out in this paved in area is where you'll be able to have a seating arrangements. If it's during a wedding, you'll have your chair set up uh, road style, so that way you have this little walkway to walk through, and then you get married underneath the chapel. Here we are. We have a subterranean cellar here at Hack Winery. So explain how odd this is for <laughs> Texas. <laughs> well, our soil is called gumbo and it's just not strong enough to hold to nobody has cellars down here we're a lot of you know it's just not the right underground material earth material to support something like this um and the story that i've been told is that raymond we have here in town in santa fe there's a like a car shop and at this car shop instead of pulling up your car on the tracks and raising it up so that they can work on it this one just roll on the tracks and the guy or girl underneath will just change the oil, do whatever. And so Raymond thought to himself, well, this is in Santa Fe. I'm in Santa Fe. What can I do? I want to find out who built this place and I want one of these as well because I have a winery and wineries have cellars, underground cellars. So here we have. <laughs> Yeah, so this used to actually be a working barrel room um, with the new owners coming in. They wanted to make it more of an event center or more of a place for our wine club members to come and relax. Um, so depending on what event we have going on, if it's a wine club exclusive, we've got uh, couches that we'll bring out and make it more of like a lounge um, or if it's a, a you know, a food Space. These are uh, lockers that our white club members or other individuals can rent um, and host their own parties from. We've got a TV, watch games. To, you know, oh, that's a nice big screen. Yeah. yeah. So they. Th this is all. You know, what, what the guys came in and did is just amazing. Put these lockers in. And it's a lot of smoking and changing up like. This whole bar, there wasn't a bar down here. Um, this used to hold our library wines, but we, we use it as storage now. Yeah, I may be having my birthday party down here. You'll hear like this is our, um, used to be the, this is our, our grates, our winery grates. You oh. know, like our, because we used to be a working winery down in here. Oh, that's awesome. But now we just cover them, so. Uh, but yeah, no, we used to have hoses down here, you know, like it wasn't working here yet. But I really love what they've done. Hey y'all, it's Mad Wine Chemist. Back from my trip down in Santa Fe, Texas, visiting Hack Winery. Thank you, Tiffany, for giving us that uh, behind the scenes look at how you guys make wine and a little bit of the history of Hack Winery. I really love that cellar, y'all. I know y'all saw that. That was awesome, something special that you don't see a lot in Texas. Um, I did buy me some wine while I was there, but I only cracked one open so far and Y'all, this is probably the best Tempranillo um, that I've tasted so far. It has very bold notes and smooth finish. You can really tell that these guys take their time with their wines and put their all in their craft because this wine is one of the best tasting Tempranillo wines that I've had. This winery recently won the Texas Winery of the Year at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And you can really tell why, because all their wines are delicious. So don't forget to go down and visit Hack Winery down in Santa Fe and let them know that Mad Wine Chemist sent you. And hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to stay up to date on the latest from Mad Wine Chemist. And 
Let's pop and pour tonight, y'all. <laughs>